Hey guys. So um, today I'm going to do another reading from my blog on Tumblr, um, Road to Kambakia. It's dedicated to my sister. This is actually a short story that I wrote back in college um, that I ran across recently and was, I mean, eerily sort of promonatory. I guess that's the right way to say it. It was like a premonition. Um, and I wanted to revisit it. I, I have the original ending to it uh, written on the blog, but I also wrote an alternate ending. Both are on there, but I'm just going to read the alternate ending right now. Um, yeah. Thank you. I'm very nervous <laughs> about doing this. Okay. It's called The Rainbow Place. My sister and I grew up in a house on a white sand beach. Nearly every morning of our childhood, we would wake up, put our bathing suits on, and race each other from our back porch down onto the shore and into the water. I was three years my sister's junior and never quite as agile as she, so naturally she should have been the constant victor of our races, but she almost always let me win. After each of my unlikely victories, she'd simply shrug her shoulders and say, I guess I can't keep up with you. We'd spend the entire day on the beach, playing games in the dunes and jumping through the rough waves until we were so tired that we collapsed onto the sand and just looked up at the shapes in the sky. And when, like clockwork, the late afternoon thunderstorms rolled in, we'd run up to seek shelter in our house and watch the bolts of lightning strike several miles out from the shore. My favorite time of day was the hour following these storms when, right out from where the white-hot bolts of electricity had touched the ocean, there appeared a rainbow. Across from our beach, there was always a rainbow. My sister and I would journey back down onto the wet sand and look at the colors in the sky. Someday we're going to swim out to that rainbow, my sister would say, and waiting there for us will be the loveliest place we've ever seen, and we will grow old there together, just the two of us. And at the end of each day, curled up next to my sister, I'd fall asleep and dream about our rainbow place until morning came. One day, after the afternoon storm had passed, we ran outside like always and looked across the water to the rainbow. I smiled and waited for my sister to begin telling me about our rainbow place. But instead, she turned to me, bewildered, and asked, why doesn't the rainbow have red today? I couldn't understand what she meant, because the rainbow looked the same to me as it always had. Of course it has red, I said laughingly as I pointed to the red streak right at the top. But she just stood there, confused, staring blankly across the water. Then, after a long moment had passed, she said quietly, Oh, yes, of course, I, I see the red now. But I could tell she wasn't sure. I could tell she was saying it for me and perhaps for herself, so maybe she could believe the color back into being. In the months that followed, though we continued our ritual, I knew something had changed. Every few days my sister would ask me about a different color. Where is the purple? Why can't I see the green? Are you sure there's orange today? Sometimes she'd lose two or three colors at a time, and though she never said it, some days I wondered if she saw any color at all. Then one afternoon, a particularly bad storm hit. The entire ocean was ablaze with the reflection of endless streaks of lightning, and the sky turned a shade so dark that I wondered if somehow the sun had given up for the day and the nighttime had come early to take its place. I was scared, and in order to keep safe, I wanted to build a fort in our living room with my sister as was our custom during particularly bad storms. But my sister, unresponsive to my pleading, just sat in silence, staring out at the sea, as though it was saying something to her that I could not hear. After what felt like hours, the skies finally cleared, and far out across the water, where only a short while before, a ferocious fire had blazed, appeared a rainbow so full of color I could hardly believe my eyes. I had never seen a rainbow so varied, so bright, so complete. Perhaps, I thought, 
This is what the ocean and the sky had been telling my sister during the storm, that they were sending her a rainbow so lovely that she could not help but see the colors again. We stood in silence at the water's edge and looked towards the horizon. I glanced up at my sister and, holding my breath, waited for her to tell me all that she could see. When she felt my gaze, she gently knelt down next to me and told me to close my eyes. As I did so, my sister, in the softest, most dreamlike whisper, for the first time in so long, began telling me about our rainbow place again. She spoke of it with such clarity that it was as though the image had never left her. As though the months of losing colors had never happened and things were as they had always been. And my heart fluttered under the weight of the most love I had ever felt. But when I opened my eyes again, I saw that I was alone on the beach and my sister, my sister for whom the world had gone gray was swimming straight out. I saw that she was swimming to our rainbow place. I called after her to come back for me. She knew I couldn't swim out that far on my own. But my sister did not answer. She did not turn back. And even though my screams became more and more desperate under the weight of the most longing I had ever felt, my sister just kept swimming, steadily, unyieldingly, out into the ocean, further than my voice could carry or my eyes could see. And just like that, with her whisper fresh in my ear and the feeling of her hand still lingering in mine, she was gone. I still go down to our spot on the beach and look out across the ocean. Some days after a particularly bad storm, when the rainbow is most present, I think I can see my sister in the waves almost gliding along the surface without effort and with the kind of grace that only comes from the realization of complete peace. And when I am quiet, I can still hear her voice in my ear whispering the promise of our rainbow place. I still cannot swim out as far as she did. Something, God only knows what, keeps me tethered to the shore. But someday, when my tired body has seen enough ocean afternoons to last a lifetime, I know I will close my eyes and the tide will take me without effort and with the kind of grace that only comes from the realization of complete peace. And it will deliver me to our rainbow place where my sister has been waiting for me all along. And we will stay young there forever. Just the two of us. Thank you. <laughs>